Um, we're going into Pell. Bankai this time on Killjoy. Forsaken on Jet. It's kind of interesting because it feels like Jet on this map is not as necessary. Like, you can use Jet to create space, but at the same time, this map is not fully relying on it, like, for example, Ascent. It's still beneficial. Uh, but as you can see, C9 doesn't need it. And uh, and I, I agree with it. You don't, you don't need the creation of, of, of the space with the Jet on this map. You work a little bit more defaulty on attack here, and if you attack A side, you just try to push away players from standing on site. You know? And in general, like... I, I'm not certain I like the, the fact that PRX plays Fade when they have no combo with it. When you, when you think about it, right? There's literally no synergy for the PRX composition. It's kind of... I'm, I'm kind of weirded out because it feels like PRX was a team that was doing a lot of, like, synergetic stuff. Like on Bind, for example, they had a lot of synergy between the agents that were playing with like taking early space, um, having synergy between the TPs and the Yoru uh, with flashes and so on. And here, like this composition, when I look at it, there's literally nothing that yells, oh shit, combat this with me. Like there's no, like if you play Fade, you prefer to have Rays. If you play Jet, you prefer to have Sova, and Sova has the upside of using the arrows for double doors to destroy early, uh, like, Killjoy bot and shit, right? And then, on the other side, we have Zelsas and Phoenix, which completely changes the way that you play this game as well, because you're gonna be farming orbs to get, like, five ultimates per half. Uh, actually, when, when, uh... We're gonna have to count the ultimates from Phoenix because that's a very interesting aspect. In my eyes, if a Phoenix on attack in full 12 rounds uses ultimate three times, that's bad. Four times, it's okay. Five times, that's positive and optimal, I would say. You know? Like, sorry, not optimal, but that's like the the the, the amount of ults that you want to have. You know? You know? So, um, and 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 Phoenix works pretty well with Sky because you can just be very flexible on the initiation, right? One time you have the ult from Phoenix, one time you have the ult from Sky, and you can open a site like a fucking can, you know? I don't personally like the Sages, but that's my own personal opinion. I can understand why they are playing them, but on Pearl, I do think, sorry, on Lotus, I do think that the Sages is pure trolling because you need more utility there. Straight back in with our second map of Paper X versus Cloud9. And it is an aggressive start once again for Paper X. They are already taking full A control. Vanity has the spike. He needs to get out of here. Yeah, Forsaken and Jing. They spot the contact and they run right back. Conceding the yeah, Zelsus control. already has one orb. The orb on the way out of there, so they might intend to after. Will they farm it with his plant? I don't think so because he's already very deep stationed. Also, I'm not certain. Like, it's kind of interesting. Look, look at the Kildry setup. There's a turret... There's a turret in backside. It's a trap for nanosomes. It's kind of interesting because this setup doesn't make much sense against his, this composition from C9. Like, you do this setup against jets. You do this setup against, um, against Yorus. But against this composition, I feel like you're never going to get value out of the middle nanosome. Like, this one here... You get no value out of this. This gets triggered first, then they destroy the, they, then they destroy the, the, the turret, and they will never get into this point. Basically just trying to stop them taking that back of sight. The second the turret takes contact, they don't really have anywhere else to like, go. Like, look, this, this has no value. Oh, so he just wants to make sure it's easier to try and retake it from there, and the second they try and move, they're forced into the open. A kill for free, but... They don't manage to win the rest of the fights. Yeah, look, a great mm. setup, great execution, on mm. it, but the return was there immediately, the heal going back up, and... Wow. But Lothar, he got one kill. Yeah, but he, he lost the sight, and got nothing. Oh, a bar 30 HP on Vanity, this is a huge advantage to play with, and he's going to be just snuck up close on the wall, playing with his team. Now, right behind is being spotted, the turret... At least managing to find Divide. They know there's at least one now spotting both. That's two out of three. They'll focus a lot on taking. Well, I thought maybe behind on fighting, but instead they look. Oh, that's unfortunate. This is going to leave them in a bit of an awkward position. 
got a leaf is alone. That that mistake on the pull might actually cost the, cost them the pistol round because the killjoy got additional kill and cost them the time. Was tough. Was tough from the beginning, but yeah. Just one bullet and it was bound to find its mark. Another pistol to start off the map going to C9. Yeah, I, I think Jing may have accidentally screwed himself there. He tried to basically trap them in so that they couldn't rotate back around. With Kildry, it's so hard to hold the side? The the what do you side mean? Had him trapped in. So he basically just had to peek straight what do you mean it's hard to hold the side? Very, very easy for them to pick him off. Then the remaining players could just all watch the long. Those the two of those kills were just obscene. He <laughs> spammed a smoke and killed someone, and then a, a pixel. I don't even know that he could see. Beyond it. Pearl? Okay. I, I, no, you just look. Many people have this uh, misconception of using the turret in different, in like contact places early. The thing is, if you play solo Killjoy, right? If you put the turret over here, then you're kind of trolling yourself because this gets instantly destroyed from top mid if sorry from top long b and and you get nothing out of it you want to use your if you're solo holding a site you want to use your turret to alert you that the that the opponents are committing to site like to understand this more clearly we're gonna take the easier side which is a to explain it so essentially if you put the turret here you're trolling because you don't get any value out of the informations out of the out of the turret but if you take the turret for example over here then you have the information that someone is already committing to the site because they're pushing out of this line. And that means they're committed. That means that they started doing the execute. So now you have more certainty about what is happening on the site, and you can play of contact of the turret and have nanosomes over here and so on, right? And on B side, if you play on B side, there are all other options that you can use with this turret, right? You can put the turret over here, for example. Right? This is a very nice spot because it alerts you what's happening on site. They need to go very deep, right? You can put the turret as well, like, a little bit deeper here to have even a, a, a deeper angle. You can put the turret... This is not, not the best spot because it can be easily smoked off, right? And an Astra ult literally just counters this 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 turret. But it also have like has, like, a semi-contact, right? If there's a Neon, you don't want to use the Kildred, to, uh, to Kildred turret here because it, it, it literally gets smoked off every time by the wall. The Viper wall can also smoke it off, so you have to also adjust if there's a Viper on the side, right? But if there's no Viper and no Neon, you can play it here. If there's Viper and Neon, you can just put the turret over here because that alerts you here when they are pushing out on screens because the angle is, like, really deep, right? There's there's so many things that you can do with the Kildred turret, just not set it up early to get destroyed because then you're getting fucked. You know? It's like... You need to be more flexible on using the turret onto a specific spots. Like, one of the best turrets that you can probably do is putting it here, on the top of the box. It shares, very, it shares similarities now with this turret, over here. And, and basically, you have a lot of info what's happening on site. I main cager, I agree, I only use the long turret for pistol round for reasons, but that's on the only time I use it because, as I said, it will get destroyed. On pistol round... Right now, before the nerf, it makes sense because it will get some damage fucking done. You know? It's, like, pretty hard to destroy this shit with pistols from that long range. It, it's gonna get some damage, even though it's only 8 damage per burst from such a long range, right? But it's gonna get some value out of it, and on pistol run, this might actually be instrumental because it might push people into kill range from nanosomes or from one headshot from classic. But in general, I feel like a lot of people are straight up trolling with the setups on B with Killjoy. You know, over on Paper Rex, we saw a very close start to the map, but they really, really tapered off at the end. You can't have that happen in this time Look, around. why on earth are you jump-picking Long B as a Killjoy when you have a turret? What? How the fuck did I open this? It's their opponent's map pick, and on the defense, you know, there's, there's a lot of complications here. I know that you're going to... I have no clue. With the comp you're up against, that Phoenix wall in particular can be so valuable for just getting you into elbow, yeah. denying all of that space, and it's exactly what you see them do. Pop the wall, you're now in elbow, and when this goes down, they're actually stood there waiting. Very smart not to push the elbow up against the pistols, and they get the reward here. 4v2. Yeah, a couple of lows. Actually, Jing's gonna get one of them. How is he so fast on turning away from a Phoenix flash? What the fuck, Jing? Of players and just a couple of rifles to bring through so 
static sound maybe coming in from I don't know it, this maybe some shielding today is not the best this is a new building I don't know man oh come on oh come on oh come on all right see literally what I just talked about look look at Benkai look look he's a killjoy He's a killjoy and he dies here. Do you hear the sound right now? Oh, you probably you're probably mentioning the sound that was in game when they're watching replays. What the fuck did I just witness? Like this is just straight up trolling. This is straight up trolling. And you know what's funny is that they expect him to stand there because he was jump peeking the previous round. Yourself to run it back online as well, and that's because Zelsus ran into elbow last round. If he flashed for his teammate, he wouldn't have that orb, he wouldn't have the ult, and now he can use that to take space. Although they might need to take space in their own spawn, looking at things. Three players here up draft, oh, spots him, leave, still gets Ooh. massive value. One ult. Oh, oh, you smart boy, mind freak, you absolute animal. He snuck past one. How can you not check an angle? The Phoenix shut down a kill. How can you not? Oh my god, Zeus is trolled. What a recovery, Zeppa has to do it all. The flash there, Seeker's online, but he's got a good idea where Jing is. Waits a moment, pops in and. Oh. Oh. How does Leaf get to here? Dude, it's, it's a... Both teams troll here. Phoenix luckily was far enough back to not get caught. That's got to be frustrating for Jing as well. He gets the wall down. Maybe he can get it to half before actually having to take a fight. And instead, it's just going to be that one player remaining. But that's enough. Still a purchase on the side of C9. Eh, it's not the greatest in the world, but when you look at what's on the other side, I don't think you're going to mind too much. I got to say, the watch parties for each team, man. You Do you think Mindful could have not peaked there? With them crazy hours. We've had a Six, seven, eight, <sighs> Probably. Packed out. The energy's high. You'd love to see it. Uh, by the way, one Phoenix ult so far. Right? One Phoenix ult. We saw they were disappointed. We saw the same from Alex. A bad reaction from the coach. We saw they were disappointed. A little bit late push with the Kildra ult, but not super terrible. So that's something. Down to an eco, just a few pistols. A marshal. But it, no, this is way too late. On catching them on the way into the site. The post plant is much harder to deal with. If you're wondering what I'm talking about, there's an episode of me talking about how to push with the Killjoy ult. It explains the concept. I would recommend watching that. It's like too too big of a concept for to explain and during the vote of you. But I don't think the push with the Killjoy ult was efficient. Oof. Couple of kills coming through. Again, a bit of cost, and bear in mind the economy isn't great for C9, so anything being removed is going to help in the future, but they now need to win a round. Bladestorm online for Forsaken, but he's getting that operator to go alongside it, and they do have the full rifles this time. This is the opportunity for sure. Ulti's there to back them up, to back them into the fights, shutting them down, and just the control we're seeing from C9 right now is hard to imagine them giving an easy round away this is one that paper x will have to fight hard for right away dude if bankai dies again first i'm gonna flip what are those setups by by bankai i don't get it man dude this is like unreal bro Kilja ult protection setup, but you have no value whatsoever out of this shit. Like, one nanosome is good enough, and you're pre-setting it up. Like this, I don't know, man. I don't, I, I don't like this at all. I really don't like this at all. Has a little bit of support. 
This is so inefficient. Like, think about it this. If you're presetting this up at the beginning of the round with the nanosomes, right? And they're never coming um, to B side, well, it doesn't matter. But if they're coming to B side, then you're essentially sacrificing the nanosomes just to make sure that they don't push CT. Well, instead, you can just be using an alarm bot and they will not push it because of that. It's like, and then you don't have anything for, for like, pushing out people, uh, sorry, on, on delaying the plant, on like buying time for the rotate, for the ult to actually get in. I don't know, I, this is, I don't like this at all. I think this is highly inefficient. Like you're sacrificing the entire kit of Killjoy to have an ultimate. Like this makes no sense. Instead, the team looked to make it towards A, so a C9 moved towards A. Uh, it was maybe going to be bad with just one player there. The Paper X now seem to be shifting yet again, playing the retake on B. Finally, let's see if he gets value out of this. But I highly doubt it. Like, I'll be honest, this is like overthinking it. You know, like that's one of the. I, I'm guilty of that as well, many times, but I try to get better at that. Overthinking shit and overestimating opponents is like pushing you into doing smart shit that is really stupid. You know? They've played this round with such patience and Paper X have almost just outthought themselves. <laughs> That's so funny that Mitch literally says that, right? Down in play, it almost seems like this utility is just a plan to try and stop them pushing to get rid of it. They're not going to be able to do anything against it. Yeah, there's no one who's going to push that. not going to do a single thing, and that will be held. Rez will bring back Zephyr, so they're just going to hold in that back line. And now the full force of Paper X has made it into position, but there is that wraparound. However, that Oof. Through the slow, without the flash. Some massive miscommunication by C9. Massive miscommunication. No one is defusing. How is no one defusing? Hello? Okay. They don't, didn't get the half. Look. The setup from Killjoy had absolutely zero value. The reason why they won this map is the Killjoy ult alone and the Astra ult. That's it. It's either an attempt to stop them going back down the stairs, but the alarm bots at the bottom. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I can only assume it's an attempt to stop them breaking the lockdown. So the whole plan mm. was to attempt to try and retake on B while having to stack up on the other yeah, side. Yeah, look, still, that is a lot I don't think in any situation any team would have pushed into that Killjoy ult on top of site. Like, that makes absolutely no sense. No one is going to push that. No one is going to push that at all, ever. Nice to force them back, and again, that space going to be taken. Prowler will get the information that all defenders have the aim in control, which is nice. But why on earth? Like, I, I don't like this setup. I really, really, really dislike this setup from uh, from PRX because they sacri they fought for a main control, right? They fought for a main control, and a player is holding out, so the alarm bot doesn't really do its job. And there's so much pressure on Forsaken on long B. There's so much, so much pressure over here on Forsaken. And if he fails, there's no, there's no other plan. The only thing that holds the B is, is Jet. This is, of course, waiting for a flash to come around from the sky so he could avoid being seen by it even. Look, see how the alarm doesn't have any value now? Because they're pushing over that. Like the air aggression is essentially limiting the amount of killjoy value. And then catch the kill. But eventually he'll fall back, play the long angle on B. Like the setup just doesn't allow to be aggressive on art, but you were aggressive uh, already aggressive on A main. So it makes no sense, man. This really makes no sense. First one goes his way. He's gonna go back for more. Maybe a bit of an overface. Gives a chance again in this round. Benka tries something crazy. They're taking damage, but every peak just hands leaf a kill. And well, Devai, there's a couple of low players, but he is nowhere near the action. 
Maybe a little bit of hesitation here from C9. Which direction steps. do they go? I think Leaf is trying to fake the steps over for Devise, so he hears him running and thinks, oh yeah, that's probably the, the straggler. That's the last guy going over to the other. And catching another round and a mead paper for it. Look at they can't put a foot wrong. Player and tag and super three to the deal. Crazy yeah. uh, attack is near flawless bar the one round which was Zeus is second ult and he definitely is gonna use it this round I wonder if he's gonna use it to battle a main or will he save it for an actual execute I feel like battling for a main is probably even more important now because they have the second layer with the killjoy ultimate so I wouldn't mind it let's see what they do and they're very close to having seekers Oh, this is so aggressive. This is straight push through. Well, this is gonna be the one for one trade, and the thing is, that's good. Yeah. Okay, so he uses it to battle a main, which is nice. Yeah, this is good. This is really good. And now Kildry will get the second layer of this attack. Look, look at this. It was close though. He almost got a bullet off. If that slow goes down, the kills you set up makes me just mad on B. Like I I'm just getting angry by looking at that. I'm trying to avoid looking at the mini map. And that early space is sort of denied. It slowed down for sure. Problem is that kill they got was one of the rifles. Bankai and Devai are at, a at least he's standing in a better position than in the pistol round. But it still makes me mad. Maybe expecting them to eventually take this A site. The only way they could get that res is to go around the back. Now the lockdown's going to deny them much of a chance for any heroics. Not really in a place where they can just run back into. He's being used to a fake A side, by the way, which is interesting, because they got the side, and Killjoy is not rotating, but the Killjoy. Oh my God! He just went through the. Do you guys see this shit? Did he use a smoke on the bot, or the bot is just terrible? What? He doesn't use anything, right? Oh, there's no shenanigans here. It's a bait, though. Or is it? it? It looked like a bait. The spike was going in the other direction. C9 have now just got that control for free, and it's sort of realizing, okay, we could fake this out. We could try and go into the... Oh, bay. my God. Yeah, this is straight up trolling. But it just isn't worth it. He just oh, gets two kills because of that. Mind freak. A site is open for business. Yeah, the so turret caught him, but it was too late. They would have given Dan something, at least the information. Hey, he was solo holding the B site. You got to give props to him. He's coming into this round with a shorty so that he can just sit in a corner on B, have his utility play contact, and let... Yeah, I, re I did review the Lotus already. Ambitious, a good idea. That's why we saw that hyper-aggressive start to make up for the weakness on B. But again, it, it's just... Met by this my God, dude. Adaptation from C9. They are so cool. Hello, Santa Maria. And it seems like they're always making the right call, even in on A with Sist. Nico, this wasn't them safe and C9 again. Drop the he doesn't need the ideas are fantastic, but I just C9 are ready every time. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Did Jin save a gun? He did. Okay. Risks not paying off. Now we're left to pistols again. Somehow this will be the round paper X end up taking. Hello! Thank I just ran up beside them, but shy of any impact. The flash did catch him, it's worth saying. Yeah, the trade's effective once again for C9. Moving as a unit versus this weaker purchase. Remember, it's very important to die as a killjoy first. In play for Ye as he looks to lead the charge. I, I won't lie, he hasn't had the most to do so far in this game. And well, <laughs> He was oh, ready. okay. <laughs> Completely executed. I think the updraft heard by Ye, the only angle he could possibly be in. Seven and one right now in favor of Cloud9. There needs to be a response, and it has to be right now. Not the scoreline Paper X wanted to field here in Brazil, and what a way it would be to go out of this tournament. A team that we know for making deep runs. As I said in the past, both of these rosters lost out to Team Liquid. Uh, we saw it actually under their first official of this Paper X squad. They have been together seven Wait, what is happening here? And 63 days. Killjoy only sets up her turret on double doors. And they play aggro on long B. But the Killjoy cannot really like rotate. Making the best roster decisions we've seen in the scene. Or at least top five for sure. Oh, the flash is perfect, but he does just about manages to dash away. 
Nice usage of the wall. Never mind. Never mind. He butchered the wall a little bit because he didn't see it clearly. He the the wall was meant to also cut off flower. It should work for them sitting back with the amount of utility they have, but it hasn't. A missed shot for Forsaken. He's out of there. Now it's left them to mind freak. He has to be that anchor. He gets absolutely nothing as well. The rotation. Yeah, that is really not well played by PRX. It's like very random angle holds. Like they don't get the first kill, get punished by playing in odd angles, mind freak peaks for no trades. Like it's inconsequential. Like there's there's no plan in holding that. In the end, I think the call is save it, and you're walking right. Well, he's actually able to walk right past that wall, so it's not too bad, but. Yeah, this time's just gone way too much. Saving the weapon now seems to be the main challenge, and they know where he is. They might want to deny it, and with Ye holding the angle, he was never getting ever, ever yeah. since then. Nine have got utilizing a lockdown and having sort of a cheeky third ultimate from Phoenix. Players rotating in behind. Other than that, well, every single push we've seen from them, those deep takes, even with three, four players, most of the time has resulted in. A Did I just see it correctly? For a second, wanted to go for the orb? No. They didn't even plan to go for the orb. Why is he not going for the orb this round? I don't. I'm not sure. I understand this. Did he sell his marshal? He sold his marshal a second. Look, look, guys. He has a marshal. He's standing in screens, and then he goes, "Nah." Look. Hello? Yeah, he sold his marshal. Look, he has 3k now. So, the entire pre-planning of this round, he was planning to play with a marshal in screens, and then in the last second, he sells the marshal, and now stands with a classic, no utility, in the backside of B, and is one of the ultimate. So he has no plan. There are two options of playing this round, right? for him. One, with the marshal on long B, or two, pushing A main to get an orb and get the ult. And now he cannot play either of those. So he's basically a walking orb this round. Well, every single push we've seen from them. And he, like, he is saving for an operator, obviously, but the problem is, he is one of ultimate, and he will not use the ultimate next round because he's gonna buy an orb. He takes him with three, four players. Most of the time has resulted in a single kill. That's all they've really managed to get. Other than that, it has been squeaky clean for Cloud9. Wait, what, what did this land? This lineup from the Killjoy? Wait, where does this land? Uh, I couldn't... So this goes from B-Link towards screens? No, towards... Default? No, towards B-Link, where Fade is standing, right? Ah, over here. Okay. Okay, that's nice. That's a nice one. That's a nice one. So it pushes out the players out of B link when they uh, when they attack the site. Well, a little bit mistimed, but it's still a nice lineup. I like that. It's just it's not just the fact that they're winning. It's not just the score against the team that they're against. It's how they're doing it. Yeah. It's just 4G, I missed your sub. I'm so sorry. 4G11, thank you much for the six months. Welcome back. Hope you're still in chat. That was 30 minutes ago. Sorry for missing you. My bad. So meticulous. There's no gaps. Even when you had that little updraft. Good morning, Godsend. Obviously, God sent. yeah, expects him on top of the wall. You heard him updrafting, but it's just like you get yourself in these weird little positions. You think, oh, I've got a good shot. Bang. Every time there's a response. Okay. Let's see if Paper X can get in there with no, the weak weapons no, and long can't. range and no, the collateral can't. kill later. We know that the answer is a resounding no. Nine looking to be on no the discipline. Be a... Well, let's not call it too early. That was a good shot with the gap in the smoke. Dead. He's dead. These lurks as go. well. We've seen Vanity and Leaf pretty much trade places throughout rounds to get in behind them. And that was a four-man stack. And they eliminate the... I'm really, really, really interested in seeing C9 playing against the Rx. It's going to be such a hype match. C9. Edder, Edder. Mind Freak. They got bored and peaked. Yeah, right. Shot nine and one. This is not the way I thought this map was gonna go. I was expecting another back and forth display, but right now C9 are just better. The last 20 rounds that we've seen have proven that, Tom. I mean, oh, look at it! Little flick. There you go. 
He's too good. And the fact that they line up and check it, you know, they heard contact early. They were being challenged for the map control. You sit there with a four-man stack, eventually you have yeah. to peek at them with weaker weapons, I of just, course. I want to say, if Paper X don't win this round with five ults, we just call it. <laughs> His DRX was tonight in all the games, elimination games as well. Everything is single elim. Every single thing is single elim. Well, Make it the curse. Exactly. Then maybe there's some hope. That's Wait, did Zelsus not use his ultimate? Okay, so this is the fourth ultimate from Zelsus. That's like four ultimates from Phoenix on our attacking half. That's like plan minimum. I didn't smell any sage burning when I walked in the building today. I put Golden Boy in charge and he's let us down. So the curse might be live, but Paper X need to get there. And that's a whole nother story. Zelsus immediately running it down. You can deafen him, but let's see you deal with him past the slow already. Molly in, wall up. They're going into oh. heaven. They're going into their own spawn, taking the fight right to Paper X. A little bit... Uh, wait, can he even jump up there? Taking the fight right I don't think it's possible, up. right? Him, but let's see you deal with him past the slow already. Molly I think it's a little bit too high. You would have to crouch jump this. I think this is crouch jumpable, but it's not crouch jump normally. You have to stand up while jumping, while crowd jumping. It's not a normal jump. It has to be a crowd jump. Like, you know, when you, when you, like on split, when you jump on the box, where well, not possible now because they changed it, but like, you know, when you have to uncrouch to like boost yourself. In, wall up. They're going into heaven. They're going into their own spawn, taking the fight right to Paper X. And they'll get a kill for their trouble before planting and leaving it for the retake. It just, yeah, this is it's obscure. Three players coming back through mid. They're going to aggress forward as well. I, 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 I need to rewind this, this round because I cannot believe what I'm watching with the killjoy setups. The fact that they line up and check it, you know, they eventually you have to yeah. peek at them with weaker weapons, I just, of course. I want to say, if Paper X don't win this round with five ults, we just call it. <laughs> I, I just can't believe what I'm watching. Every single round, Benkai is setting up two nano swarms and completely has no plan how to play with them. I, I'm sorry, he has a plan. But that plan is just not working at all. Like, that is just... I don't know, man. Like, the two nano swarms now in art, most of the attacks that Cloud9 was doing from A was actually from A main. And the supplemental charge was coming from art. And that art charge was never coming onto site. They were just holding. So this nano does they they, they do they don't have any value. Oh, that's exactly. all we've got. I didn't smell And also Alright. Okay. Actually I should have started with that. I should have started with that. Why on earth are you putting two nano swarms into art when the art is being taken aggressively by a sage jet combo with an with a wall? Like why on earth? Just look at this. Well, Just look what's happening here. Right here, we have an aggressive stationary jet on a wall, and we put three, three pieces of utility from the Killjoy behind her. So if you want to get value out of this Nanoswarm combo, you need your jet to die and Sage to die, because they're going to be posted up here to fight. Got to at least get around. They've got to get like, something. it seems like they just don't have a consistent plan. They change it because he had his turret here, right? At the beginning in dugout. But then they went, no, we push out. So his setup is useless. Like, there's, there's some really, oh, really... Exactly. Maybe there's some hope. Completely I lost planning. I didn't smell any sage burning when I walked in the building today. I put Golden Boy in charge and he's let us down, so... The curse might be live, but Paper X need to get there. And that's a whole nother story. Zelsus immediately running it down. You can deafen him, but let's see. Going into their own spawn, taking the fight right to Paper X. And they'll get a kill for Crazy the stuff, man. Before planting. By crazy, I mean, fuck me. Just, yeah, this is it's obscure. Three players coming back through mid. They're going to grass forward as well and manage to find another. It's like really like they play without any ultimates. Uh, sorry, without any killjoy like utility. You know? Just a couple of rounds in a row. He's managed to do so much. It's left not forsaken. He's going to get caught by the ultimate as well. And sure, the same will happen to Vanity on the other side. But it doesn't matter. You like the Phoenix pick? 
Phoenix is fine. And I, I like, literally explained it at the beginning of this vote review. On this map, you don't really need the space creation of a jet. What you need more is, is just essentially vision control. I said the exact words. What a treat of a game we've had. <laughs> They've got two rounds since then. What is going on? Hello, in 763 days. We have never seen a team challenge Paper Rex like this. Cloud9 putting them to shame and showing that their map pick certainly has no weaknesses. Not so far, anyways. And I don't see any coming around the corner. Ben, can I again I said look, look, look last round. He has a setup for defending side, but he's fighting on B-Long. So he's... If you fight for B-Long, well, at least use the turret aggressively. You know what I mean? It's like... It's so, so weird. Give them the smallest amount of hope, but they've still got to deal with this push onto the site. Again, Zelsis has just been fantastic at taking the space. He hasn't dealt with Jing. Still just sat in the back lines. Okay, they, they didn't check backside, so Jin can actually have this easy. <laughs> oh, he got it! He got it now! Oh, God. And now, again, the killjoy set up and backside had no value. Like, it's crazy, man. It's crazy. It's just absolutely crazy, man. At least pop it now before you go into site. I don't know, man. Not quick enough this time. The I don't know, man. Small gap, but they had plenty of time left in the end. Ten to two, Tom. Uh, three rounds. We've seen it happen. Phoenix Wall is underrated. Phoenix Wall in general is pretty good, and also with the updates to the equip time, you can be very fast on on using it. Remember that when you do the Phoenix Wall, you only start equipping the gun. When you're not curving it. It's important here that the, the UI is wrong. C9 are defending, right? That's it. Another nail in the coffin for Paper X, who now have to go on the attack up against a team who've been nearly impossible to even scratch the surface of. And this team, by the way, has Ye. He's a pretty good player. He's middle of the scoreboard, Tom. And it's 10-2. Right. <laughs> Get out of here. See you later, Ye. Deal with that one. A decent start for Forsaken. Oh, I like that. Let's look how they are doing that. Let's look like how they are doing it. Ha okay, okay, I'm I'm already upset. I'm already upset because look, I don't mind the turret from Benkai on Long B, but why on earth is the Astra in spawn then? Let's see what the Astra does because if the Astra goes long, then yeah, that's fine. But if the Astra stays in B-Link, then this turret doesn't have any, any job to do. Uh, let's see, what, what, what's the plan for the actual execute, though? Stars on exit of backside and exit of CT. So those are for stunts? No, those are... Ah, okay. So they're doing those smokes to kind of bait people into going into them to for, for, for a second shorty. That's essentially it. Because those smokes are typically pretty fucking bad. But when you when your strategy really evolves around forsaking creating chaos with the shorty, then this is those are great smokes. But otherwise, those are really bad smokes. Well, some trolling at the end and putting it in, into actual winnable position. And again, this starts to swing back in the other direction. A couple of kills coming through for the likes of C9, but it's left all on to Lee. He's had an amazing game so far. This would have to be the best of them. Remember, my friends, when you're going from a high ground like this, right? Don't jump up. When you jump up, right? When you jump up, unless you really badly need the, the momentum and the velocity to, like, jump further, don't jump up, because when you jump up, you give a sound cue from this point. When you leave the ground, beep, you get a sound cue. But if you just drop down, you get a sound cue when you land, not when you start falling. To swing back in the other direction. A couple of kills coming through for the likes of C9, but it's left all on to Lee. He's had an amazing game so far. This would have to be the best of them. Two players remain, both playing deep. He has 25 HP. 
Let's see if uh, DRX has good uh, discipline here, by the way. Well, they knew how he is. Eh, whatever. Though. We need to see a lot more than that, but if I'm not mistaken, that's the first pistol they've won. C9 kicked off map one with the pistol, kicked off the second half, and then lost the follow-up round, and then answered back, if I recall correctly. Oh, no, actually, they did the stinger buy, didn't they? They round two stinger bought, and they won the round. So if we're 50-50 on pistol, which takes even more excuses out of, out of the hands for such a one-sided game. C9 look like they're in a different tier. One thing I do dislike about the Astra uh, smoke faking on B is that it's very short. I much more rather use the jet smoke here. Yeah, I like that. But this is much much more efficient because four seconds allow you to your team to cross after using the utility from fade and so on, while the the fade smoke is just like the fake is just too short. It doesn't allow a lot a, a lot of movement there. You know. A rare miss from Ye, a good angle from Jing. And we end up with a, well, a tension to go B canceled. I don't know if it was what they spotted, but whatever's happened, they've made the right call. Four players stacked up from C9, and Paper X are going A. Yeah, this is a free site. I think C9 just basically playing. All right, this is the eco, it doesn't matter much. Okay, never mind. <laughs> Let's watch this. What is going on? What is going on, man? You you have the range of the bots. What? What? Oh no! Oh no! He, sh he shouldn't have been there. You shouldn't have expected him to be there, and he didn't. And he got. He oh no! Okay. That was Fine. even the angle that I'm he was gonna... aiming at on the way. You know what's what? You know what's the worst? This Alarmo bot from Killjoy can be already dodged as well because you can just go on top of mid and just fall back for that one. I know we like troll replays. I, I know, I understand. Don't do it, please. Come I understand on. production. We like troll replays. Oh no. We we like How they're oh, getting another please. kill. I listen, there's people at 9.30 a.m. sitting yeah. in Singapore cheering their hearts we, out. We, I do not want to see once. a replay of that, please. Just this once. That would be forsaken. Let's, I'll tell you that. Let's just not. Okay. Back a few times. I'm just hoping that's been see the first few. This has been number one. The second as a judge. Yes. Ah, is Leaf doing a little bit of trolling as well with the killjoy? Now they put a lot of their killjoy utility a lot. But, but you can see that Leaf is actually being proactive with the alarm bot and the nano swarm for the site, and they play off the alarm bot contact for the flash. Like this, I like this. This is a very brute force setup, but it allows you to be ef brutally efficient as well. And look at the distance that um, that we see Zelsis have from the wall. This is the distance for the flash. So it's going to be perfect pop flash right over the corner over here because he stands so far away. That's something that Phoenix, Phoenix players have to maintain like the knowledge of this common spot so you can prepare yourself for perfect Perfect flashes. So once this alarm bot gets triggered, pop flash goes in, he peeks, leaf peeks. Like, I wouldn't mind leaf actually playing closer here. I know that he doesn't get flashed at all, but I feel like, actually, no, you know what? No, this is actually smart because if he would be standing closer here, he might be actually fully flashed by accident. And if he cannot look into this direction because of the flash, that means if he's standing closer, he can get killed before the alarm bot gets contact because someone can just go into this area on the minimap and just spot him with the alarm bot being active. So this he has to stand over here or even behind Jenny here. Let's see how this plans out. Oh, the smoke counters everything. Unlucky. <laughs> Up, it actually keeps Leaf fully able to see, and he's nice. taken for taken down. Denial of that strategy that netted so much inside of that pistol. Nano to push Jing back, no plan for now, but that wall has to be broken. Yeah, they've done well already. Zephyr with another will take the fight. They're getting absolutely nothing. Cloud9 again. But it yeah. Almost just seems like a blip Yo. on their radar. The second Imagine planting. Remake. Imagine planting when a single nano swarm stops the plan in the strike and then you destroy the sage wall and you have no backup plan. Can just try and fall away. 
the thing is though, you can already see on the other side of the map, it's being patiently held by Vanity, so there's not anywhere to go back to, and they've only got 30 seconds. Man's already got Nano's down for post plant, but it doesn't look like we're Oof. gonna make it there. Cloud9 again, have the they died in you see just I don't think the jet was fully flashed, but let them check replay. Outrageous. The writing thing. They are so fluid. They were so fluid on Lotus on their defense. The writing was on the wall there. But this no, the jet wasn't flashed. Just an when she came into the smoke, I mean. Clean performance. Yeah. I, even here. Lul. Did you see that? The last bullet that broke the wall, one more went through, and it killed the planter. <laughs> just. Remember that the nano swarm also damages the sage wall, so it's easier to destroy. Remember that it is actually very impactful. That damage stacks with the bullets. They need to get themselves that blade swarm, something extra to play with. Give forsaken away. Wait, what? Oh. <laughs> Unlucky, I guess. Uh, that's one way to do it, man. Just straight through the wall. Let's guess. Uh, he might be here. Yep. There he is. Quick headshot. Does the business C9 man disadvantage to start with flash from Zelsus trying to catch them when they push up that, da the that dash from the jet is like they're not fantastic. They, <laughs> they push up after the lockdown. The trade, they're not fantastic. They can't <laughs> way. One return, mind breaks forsaken it? Jing on their way towards this site still with that lurk coming in. I don't oh, that's a great flash. That Ooh. The, the no look, the no look. He's just flexing on him. Zeppa now has a chance. Now the wall is going to be broken. A player on the other side, Forsaken, doesn't land the shot immediately. Wait, you're saying, oh no, this round? Is Zeppa actually winning this? Far away from being back online, but Seekers might give it to so him. Smart. It is going to be the res instead, but he's going to go swing it. How many times am I t talking about this when you play Sage, guys? I mean, like, how many times am I am I talking about this? When you play Sage and you are in a clutch, you always use your ult as a bait. You're not defending the ult. Literally the most basic mistake as a Sage. Forsaken Falls 2? Is he even... Let me check for a second. I don't think he was speaking though, right? He just repositioned towards CT. But his position is not known. Is he peeking here? Let me check. Yeah, he is. Okay. Well, that is a pure troll. That That is a pure troll. But also Jinx trolled. So it's like... But for a second, troll is way bigger. It is going to be the res instead, but he's going to go swing it no. up. What is that from Zappa? He just eliminates everyone. Basically sends Paper X home and puts 12 on the board for C9. How on earth does he win that? That is one of the greatest clutches that I have ever seen. That man oh, come on. Not even close to Artist Clutch. Sure the walk back out of like the Artist Clutch against DRX. Oh, my heart hurts. Um, was like pure skill and i don't think even dx was that uh, that trolling that much although that updraft on jenny was a little bit unlucky i would say that was a little bit of trolling but here this is like pure trolling so of course zeppa is fantastic is a fantastic player but he only clutches this because his opponents are going whoop, whoop, rank mode swung in knowing that the spawn player would be point of contact and knowing that sage was going to go for the res that is just outrageous he predicted exactly how they were going to play that. An ace to close it 12 to 4. <laughs> they have eight chances to eliminate Paper X, a team that at international events they've been many a time. They have never lost an opening matchup. They've never lost to North America, rather. Period. 2 to 0 in their international record, and here we go. Wow. Records sometimes they're made to be broken. Wrong side. Fan dead Clutch. Clutch. Yes. Seven hundred days together as a four man. And now PRX has. Oh my God! Awful buy. Jing is playing Vandal no armor no wall. Early on in a tournament, their opening match and elimination. Look, look at the set. Look at the look at the difference in setups by Leaf and Benkai. Just look at A. 
right now they have a setup that is comboing Astra and Killjoy while actively working towards A. This looks like an actual plan from C9 because they're going to be aggressively holding A and this is a this is a plan oops this this is a plan to make sure that you're not being pushed by from odd because you're aggressively taking space on A. Like it's it's such a stark contrast between those two teams it's actually crazy. Time and when it finally matters the most doesn't look like they've got the response. That wall up top, he's already down below. Yay, wanting to take a shot. But he's not given an opportunity. And now he's starting to rotate. Uh, uh, okay. Yeah, that, that turret holds main as well. So they can play off the flash of the turret as well if they don't take the aggressive A main. Him to keep going a little bit when I saw him move past the box, but he is just going to tuck in here. See this? Like double stars. Look at this. This can be used as a bait with a smoke, right? So if they're... If, if you hear that they're going towards... Uh, no, sorry, not the smoke. Let, let me rephrase. What, he, what is the setup here is that if this is destroyed because they go contact, right? If the opponents are going contact and this gets destroyed, then this is being popped as a, as a stun. This is being popped as a, as a suck. And then this gets debuffed and this gets popped to kill people here. That would be my assumption. And if they don't destroy this, and they trigger this, then this is, again, a stun, a pull, and double nano. Like, it's a kill zone. Very slow round play out while Paper X cautiously moved through. They are worried I don't think this is meant to be a smoke at all. Because they, no one is controlling that, you know? Vanity still jump spotting. Just making sure that any information could be... What? And he's still jump spotting, just making sure that any just dry peeking double those. Let's go. No smokes, no flash because they don't have a flash, but no prowler, no nothing. Just dry peek, double those die. Just making sure that any information could be had, and mind freak is gone. You, you, horrible person. He has that wall up, and you see that they're immediately like, okay, yeah, he's on top of the wall. He's going to peek from on top of the wall. He's going to peek from on top of the wall. Then the dude just swings into connector and kills you. Ooh. Almost goes down. That's at least something. Low on HP. Going to get a heal. It's going to be four seconds to go back. Orb taken as well from Zelsis. That's going to put the running back online. They can literally just play retake on this oh, speed site. You're going to have so much space to be taken. That they don't hear you and you have nothing being charged, so you you could be more aggressive here. I like the push. I like that, but I don't like that. But I like the aggressive push in CT. But that's about it. And now Zess with the ultimate goes like. Yeah, dude. Crazy. That, um, I mean, huge, huge contrast, huge contrast between those two teams. Like, it's not even close. C9 was more prepped, better plans, better discipline. They were just better on every single front than PRX. This is like an actual, actual team diff, you know? And I like PRX. They're nice people, you know? They're really nice people. And I love Forsaken, you know? But my God, this was a pure... Pure team difference, man. And composition-wise, I do think that PRX was trolling on both both uh, both maps. Like those compositions were not well thought out. They had no synergy whatsoever. But hey, someone has to lose. I'm not cool.